Good morning, and let's talk about Bitcoin this morning. Good morning. I feel like that's the best way to start the morning, talking about exactly. Bitcoin and complicated stuff, right? Right. So I'm here with Eric Larchevec from Ledger Wallet. What have you been doing so far? Well, uh, we have been doing great. Uh, our company has launched one year ago. Uh -huh. And uh, since then, uh, we have managed to become one of the leaders of uh, security solution providers for Bitcoin because uh, security is a very important question in Bitcoin because we are dealing about digital assets, money, uh, and uh, it's like cash, like gold. When you buy gold, you put, you put it in a safe. You would just put it on your, uh, on your bed. So with Bitcoin, yeah, it's bed. the same. <laughs> yeah. you, you need to have uh, real security because when you own Bitcoin, what you really own are private keys. So what kind of products have you released so far? Well, we have adapted the, um, the smart cards to the needs of the Bitcoin. So um, this is a, a smart card, the same chip that you will find in uh, EMV, you can open it, the same chip that you will find in uh, EMV um, credit cards, the chip and pin credit cards, and it's on the USB form factor. So it's going to be connected right into your PC, your Mac, your Linux, and it will protect your private keys and make all the signature, the critical operations directly inside the chip. So why is it more secure than storing your bitcoins on, on your, your computer, for example? Um, a computer is not made, is not been built, or a smartphone, not built to be secure. And if you can get malware, viruses, they just need to scan the memory and they will find your private keys. And as soon as the attacker gets a hold of the private keys, all your bitcoins are gone. So you really need to use secure chips to, to protect them, to manage them. So how secure it is? Is it extra, extra secure, super duper secure? Yeah, it is very, very secure. This kind of chips has nev have never been broken. This is the same technology used by the banking industry for, for decades, and it's extremely secure. It Do you use it yourself? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, on this key, there are like more than 1,000 bi bitcoins, actually. 1,000 so bitcoins yeah, on this like key? Yeah, like half a million dollars. So, uh, so it's yeah. worth half a million dollars yeah. on this yeah. key? Yeah, on this key, yes. So what happens if I leave with it and I basically stole your key? Yeah, well, there are three levels of security. The first is the PIN code. Uh, so you need to know the, the PIN code, like four digits, for instance. And if yes. you r put it uh, wrong three times, it will just wipe the key. Um, after uh, you need, in fact, to, uh, uh, to, to, to open it on the computer, put the pin, and when you want to make a transaction to, to spend the Bitcoin, it will push my smartphone for a double factor confirmation. So you also need to get my smartphone and to get the pin of my smartphone. And can you remotely wipe the key or something like that? No, 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 because each time that you made the wrong pin, you need to, to, to remove the keys and put it inside again. So you cannot get uh, DDoSed, let's say, uh, by, like that. You cannot just wipe remotely. Okay, cool, cool. And do you have any new product to show maybe? Yes, uh, this, this was our first product. It is uh, very simple, so it is very cheap. Uh, this kind of keys is about uh, like $35, so it's very affordable. Uh -huh. um, but now we have a new kind of uh, products which are also based on uh, uh, secure chips, but uh, with a screen. So the idea is that you can directly manage your Bitcoin on the, on the screen. You will enter your PIN code directly on this secure screen. And then once you enter your PIN code and you want to make a transaction, you will be able to confirm the transaction directly on the screen. Because so you don't need to plug it to your computer, essentially? Well, you still need to, to, to talk to a computer because it, is not, um, it doesn't have Wi-Fi or it doesn't have a GSM. Oh, okay. uh, but you can directly confirm what you are doing directly uh, on, the, on the screen. So it's like what you see is what you sign. And it's a very important uh, security feature uh, because also, it has open APIs, and you can use this kind of device also to uh, do a second factor authentication when you log into Google Apps, like a Dropbox, uh, or if you want to encrypt or sign documents, you can really verify what you are signing directly on the screen. Cool. How much does it cost? Um, we, we are planning to launch it on the Q2 uh, 2016. Now we have only like developers editions, around uh -huh. $200, but we really want to make this uh, uh, like a mainstream uh, uh, device more, uh, more affordable. So it will be between $100, $150, something like so that. Let's, let's pause for a minute and talk about the origin story. Why did you first uh, get interested about Bitcoin? 
Well, it's a, it's a story I'm following for a, a few years. And uh, when I, I sold my previous uh, startup, uh, I had some, some time and let's say money on the end that I had to invest. Uh, and I really thought that Bitcoin was a very interesting technology because uh, it's uh, really changing everything and you can do um, a lot of things that you couldn't do before. Uh, it's a real disruption. And um, I, um, I knew two other uh, startups which were working in, in Bitcoins and uh, we were all a match, three of us. So we decided just to merge the three startups. And this is how Ledger is born with the idea of bringing security uh, features to, to Bitcoin. Now we both know Bitcoin currently is some kind of a lull and some people are saying it's not as interesting as it used to be a year ago or a couple of years ago because people are failing to get interested into Bitcoin. What, what, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, th there was clearly a bubble, a bubble uh -huh. in the price and also a bubble in the interest. Everyone thought that Bitcoin will become mainstream like next year. Uh, and the reality is that it will not be uh, the case. Uh, it's a very complex technology. It is a very complex uh, economy. Uh, we are talking about uh, money, finance, and people cannot change the way they are using uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, payment means like that. Also, Bitcoin is very interesting when, uh, let's say, you have uh, your economy, uh, you have some difficulty, you live in a country where you have, I don't know, like, so capital control like or Greece or, in a country Greece or like South that. America or, or in Russia or uh, but if you live in Europe or in the US um, then it's quite it has some benefits because uh, with Bitcoin you can uh, use machines to make payments uh, you cannot uh, cancel a payment so you have like smart contracts a lot of things but it's not like something everyone really needs and uh, I think this was the error that people made like one year ago thinking that it will uh, take over the world but it's not the case. It still is a very interesting piece of technology, but I'm not sure it will become like huge and mainstream like tomorrow. It will take a lot of time. So do you think there will be some kind of uh, use cases that will be more interesting than others and it's not going to be become some kind of general payment system? Yes, uh, first of all, um, like financial institutions, banks, governments uh, started to understand that Bitcoin is not only a currency, it's also a technology yes. uh, with the blockchain. And uh, we have seen in the last months a lot of investments uh, directly in the idea of the blockchain to make uh, uh, clearing, to have uh, digital assets, a lot of different use, case, use cases that just the currency. And it is just the, the beginning of what we will be able to do. Uh, but it will take some time. So my, my, my prediction is that uh, we will have to wait maybe five years before we release. Five years. Yes, it's it's a long time in the in the startup world. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm I know that uh, it's uh, it will be a, a, a long time investment. It will not be like tomorrow uh, something huge. Uh, I think we just need to be patient because the technology also takes time to uh, to develop and uh, to to become more mature. And then there are people working for banks like Citibank and and all these kind of banks who are investing into cryptocurrency in general, uh, putting, putting together teams working on, on yeah. Bitcoin research and stuff like that. Where do, where do you think it's going? Is Bitcoin going to be a thing for startup or are banks going to take over this new technology? Well, I think it will be both because uh, one use case doesn't prevent the other. One thing is for sure is that if uh, banks or fintechs doesn't uh, grasp, grasp the potential of Bitcoin and the blockchain uh, technology, uh, in a few years, uh, they may become in a way irrelevant for some parts of uh, the financial industry. And I think that they understood that. That's why they have like hundreds of people working in teams analyzing the potential of, uh, of Bitcoin, of the cryptocurrencies in general, or smart contracts, because uh, we have here really the, 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 the potentials for huge disruptions and they want to be part of it. So definitely they will integrate Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies into their day-to-day -day process. Cool, cool. Uh, what's, what's the most interesting use case you've seen so far with Bitcoin? Well, I think it's just the, one. Just one. It's the, uh, the international payments. Uh, because you can really pay anyone, anywhere, usually the mass payments. Uh, this Have you heard about Freemit? What? Freemit? Uh, not this one. It's, it's a new startup. It's, it's getting there. It's, pretty, yes. it's getting pretty popular, yeah. Yeah, well, Bitcoin is on the, on not the only way to do that, but it's the most easy way to do it, uh, especially if you are dealing uh, with a lot of countries or a lot of jurisdiction in the same time. All so right. it's quite, it's very powerful. So maybe one last question, and you know I've got to ask this. Yeah. Is this your personal account on this? <laughs> yes. 
So you have five hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin? Yeah, and they are very, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and they are well secured. That's why I'm. So I think uh, it's fair to call you the Winklevoss of France or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank maybe. you, Eric. Thank I you. think we are going next with Jordan's interview. Who is going to take the stage and uh, interview a new guest? I, I, I'm not sure who is it. All right. Thank you. Thank you.